G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. I'd like to thank you all for sort of bearing with me while I get my microphone fixed up. It has been a while since I have had the Go XLR, but I've been playing with a lot of things, and being an audio mixer, it takes one thing wrong, and then everything goes pear-shaped. So do bear with me, and I thank you guys for doing so. I think I've found just about the right level, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to get some nice videos out with some good audio levels very, very shortly. Speaking of audio levels, you'll probably be able to hear some background noise, some gameplay, if you will. And that would be the Go XLRs doing. So thank you guys to everyone who's watched ads, everyone who's bought anything through Air Models or merch or anything like that. I really, really thank you because you guys basically paid for it. So... Without, with that basically out of the way, I'd like to move on to the BF109G14. This particular match was ridiculously intense, and it was kind of intense in the same way the D13 video was. It's not really often that I get these types of matches, and these sort of very, very incredible dogfights only really tend to happen at this tier. I suppose it's because people have finally gotten props down pat, and it's only a matter of time before they start using them amazingly, and at this point you have sort of a battle of the titans, those people that are fairly experienced, as well as those sort of new gunners that are making their way up the tech tree, but have also managed to master the art of props, and it is fantastic. If you can ever get yourself up to this battle rating, and sort of master it, you are a damn good prop pilot, and these battles, whilst it's not entirely me being an amazing player, these dogfights really just made me happy. And that is kind of what War Thunder is all about. If you're not having fun, then try and play something else. And for me, I was enjoying some jets, and then I got a little bit burnt out, so I came to props for a little bit. So you'll probably see a little bit more prop content over the next couple of weeks. Uh, you may see a little bit of a return to jets as well. Uh, the idea is just to sort of give it an even run, and hopefully we'll get some nice gameplay in the meantime. So, the BF109 G14, what exactly is this plane? Well, it's pretty straightforward to be honest, it's a BF109. Uh, but at the same time, it is on the chonky side, because it's one of those sort of later BF109s that is more designed as a bomber interceptor or, a, or, a, or an interceptor as such, rather than a pure air superiority fighter. Uh, and that kind of reflects in the way that this plane should be played in a sense. But on the other hand, you can still flip this bad boy around and it will, not, not quite turn on a dime, but it will pull out maneuvers when you need them to, which makes this a really, really enjoyable dogfighter. Now, what I've done is I've climbed at about 200, somewhere between 240 and 280 kilometers per hour is about your ideal climb rate. That's in IAS, and I would highly recommend that everybody displays both IAS and true airspeed up on their HUD. And you can do that in the menu, I can't quite remember, but definitely play around, because it'll, it'll now give you the option for both, which is something that I've asked for for a very, very long time. And I think it was uh, about six months ago that it came through, so it's just really nice to have, and it's been fantastic. Anyway, the BF-109 G14 still kind of falls in that dogfighting type capability. The K4 is where it really starts to become a chunky monkey, and even though the K4 can still do some little tricks and some dogfighting, I probably wouldn't take the K4 out as a dogfighter. I'd do more energy fighting, and that's kind of where you have to sort of move towards in the G14. You can throw it around if you really want, but energy fighting really is the key with this thing. If you can maintain an energy advantage over, say, a Spitfire, a Corsair, a P-51, you really have that game in your hands. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do with climbing. I am above this first Spitfire, but a second one is about to pop in. And these are going to be my primary opponents this match. I am actually not going to kill anything except a Spitfire. And, uh, spoiler, I'll kill a PB-4Y, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So... This particular Spitfire here, who's off on my uh, right wing, is making a really good pace towards me. And as you look at my airspeed, I'm actually quite slow. My indicated airspeed, which to me is the more important airspeed, uh, is, uh, is very, very low. And the reason why indicated is a bit more important is because that sort of dictates my, my turning capabilities as well as my, uh, like my rip speeds and my stall speeds. So 
Speaking of stall speeds, I'm going to drop my throttle and I'm going to not stall. I'm going to try and pick up less speed than this Spitfire in a dive, but then I realize he's an LF Mark 9 and he is out turning the living hell out of me. So my best option is to hammer the throttle and try and make a run for it. Now, the BF109, whilst being the overall faster plane at altitude, is uh, one of the slower accelerating planes. So you need to sort of maintain as much speed as possible or pick it up in a dive, which is what I've done here and hopefully go up to a vertical where the Spitfire will not be able to follow due to its lower energy retention, and then, using some clever flaps, come down on this Spitfire and hopefully land yourself a really nice stall kill. Now, this Spitfire starts off pretty smart, and he's just going to sort of fly underneath me, try and get me to commit to a turn fight by pulling that left-hand turn, but I'm really not going to be having any of it. I need to go straight to that vertical because I know I'm going to lose a turn fight, and I'm converting that altitude, sorry, that speed back into altitude in the hopes that he will stall out. And this Spitfire follows me, hoping that his lower stall speed will sort of bring him to get the kill on me. However, it doesn't really happen because we're at the altitude where the LF Mark 9 is not a happy chappy, and he lands right in front of my guns. That, my, my, my good friends, is probably the best stall kill that I've had in a very, very long time. The best Ropadoke. But we don't even have time to sort of relish on that kill, so I'm going to throw in some rudder, throw in some rolls against this Spitfire, lowering, lowering my throttle, but not cutting it entirely, and just trying to roll and rudder out of the way of this Griffin Spitfire. The Griffin Spitfire, unlike the Merlin, has a little bit less turn rate, but has better energy retention, so you have to sort of be a bit more careful in this situation, but I've managed to damage his cooling. And we all know that the Merlin and Griffin engines are both absolutely crap when they do not have any cool. Even when you do tap the engine like that, it, there's a very high chance that I've damaged that engine even a little bit. And once that happens, the Spitfire is really not going to be in a bad way. It's only a matter of minutes before I manage to take him out. And all I have to do is engage in this sort of vertical turn fight, which is kind of more leaning towards an energy fight than a turn fight. I'm using my throttle to try and make the nose fall in a little bit quicker. And then as I go down, I'm going to hopefully hammer the throttle, which I kind of forget here, and only do it at the last second. But you can see that he's now starting to run out of energy. His highs are not even coming close to my... or, or they're just coming to roughly my lows of my loops. So instead of being, the, uh, being a, an absolute monkey and drinking stupid juice, he decides to do the smart thing and go for the dive. Now the Spitfire, because he's started the dive a little bit earlier than me, he's going to get a little bit of headway. But as me, the heavier plane, catches up, I'm going to start to beat him in the dive. You see, the Spitfire in some cases can actually outdive BF 109s. But of course, if you don't have that engine, and of course, if you are fighting the big chunky the BF 109s, you're not really going to end up in a situation where you're going to be running away from them. The BF-109s are, at the end of the day, the faster plane, and the only thing this Spitfire can really do is start to engage in a rolling scissors, but unfortunately, I'm not really sure that he's going to engage in that. Now, the smart thing for this Spitfire to do would have been to continue turn fighting, but he decides to pull off. And now, this other Spitfire decides to come in behind me. He's actually catching me because he's putting himself into a dive, and I've come out of a dive, so only now you can see that energy retention starting to work into my favor. He is catching a very, very tiny bit, but as soon as I put myself up into a little bit of a climb to retain that energy, the Spitfire just simply isn't going to bother following because he's just going to lose too much airspeed. Now, I'm going to put myself up into a vertical, and unbeknownst to me, there's a friendly TAR-152 who's giving chase, which will, at the end of the day, pursue one of the Spitfires into a little bit of a dogfight. One of the Spitfires gets critical, which I'm assuming is one of the Spitfires that has a damaged engine. It might be this gentleman right here who has decided that the trees are now his best friend. And the TAR-152 coming again from a dive, having lots of speed to bleed, is going to force this Spitfire to engage in a turn fight. Now the TAR-152 kind of follows at the beginning, but then realizes that it's uh, not really a smart idea, goes into a vertical, but leaves the Spitfire in a really perfect position for me to come in and take. Uh, I'm not really sure if that was a kill still. I don't really think so because he's still sort of combat capable. And of course, being a Griffin Spitfire, when he is on low energy, 
he is absolutely screwed. So, that is three really nice kills on a Spitfire, or on Spitfires, just by the dogfighting process. Was it three? Three or two? I think it was three. It was three. Yes, I can count. So, this is where the match starts to get a little bit quiet. Generally, in Air RB, you tend to have that really nice first fight. And then it drops off, and then you find yourself a couple more, especially on a map this big. Now, I'm a real big fan of this type of map. Now, I probably should make this into a proper video on its own. Do let me know in the comments below. Uh, but I would really love more airfields on Air RB maps, because it just gives players more options, and it also prevents people from camping 100% of everyone's airfields. A single player, or at least two players, can't really effectively camp uh, like uh, two airfields, essentially. You're going to have a hard time picking and choosing which airfield to camp, and Hurtgen Forest, and uh, I believe this is France, and I think Moscow is another one, has two separate runways sort of opposite, you know, in the corners of each map, and I really, really like that. I also like the forward airfield on Ruhr, and sometimes there's a forward airfield on the El Alamein map, which is actually a really good idea. I, I quite like it, and I hope it stays, because it's one of those options that players have. Instead of sort of tunneling them into a spot, which tends to make people frustrated, what they should be doing, and what they have done in these cases, is just adding the separate airfield, whether out of laziness or out of ingenuity, uh, it has given players more options. And that can only be seen as a positive thing. So, now I'm playing Spot the Dot. Because I'm in clouds, the cloud rendering is a little bit funny. And so I'm able to see these big, what uh, Jean-Claude Jean Van Schott, the uh, Twitch streamer, likes to call big, or what was it, angry, angry dots? Ang little angry dots, or some something like I've butchered it, but those of you that watch him, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't watch him, definitely go and watch him. He uh, streams in the European time zone and is really relaxing, really chill, uh, and he's a pretty nice guy. He's also Russian, but speaks pretty good English uh, and loves a good joke. So if you guys would love to go and uh, jump in to Jean-Claude Van Schott's streams, uh, that would make me very, very happy because he is an absolutely lovely guy. Anyway, onto this particular incident here. I've decided to go after this little angry dot, but also found myself in a situation where I am engaging a Spitfire, or, or a Spitfire is at least trailing and catching up with me. Now, I'm not really sure how he's managing to catch up with me, but I suppose it's probably just because he's dived from altitude. Now, this PB4Y, I've already gone into a straight line, so I'm not really going to turn for this Spitfire, just because that closure rate is really, really high, and I might as well snag myself a PBY while I'm at it. The PBY does damage my engine and my oil tank, and this kind of leaves me in a weird situation. I'm not going to be able to out-energy this guy, so I have to get into a dogfight. He is an LF Mark IX, and I am going to really, really struggle fighting this guy. I put myself in a situation where I am quite slow, so I'm going to use that rudder to try and kick me over, lowering the throttle, of course, and then putting the nose down just a little bit to sort of hopefully get this guy to overshoot. And then out of the clouds comes a P-47M. Now, the P-47M is ridiculously strong and is a formidable opponent. So an LF Mark IX and the the, uh, the P-47M right behind me are going to be really, really tough. Now, the Spitfire is obviously still going max throttle, and he manages to barely overshoot. But because of some rudder funkiness in the BF-109, I absolutely get smacked in the right spot by the uh, P-47M. And now I have to make a decision between P-47M or Spitfire LF Mark IX, and I choose the P-47, simply because the P-47, if I can get rid of him, perhaps I have at least one chance, or at least I can take someone down with him. So, the LF Mark IX decides he wants to come in, and the TAR-152 manages to sweep in, get the kill, just as the match ends. What an absolute cock block. That made me really, really sad, but honestly, it was a fantastic dogfight, and I'm going to come away a happy man. Ace or not, I guess that's just how the cookie crumbles. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.